super excited. Today on Sustainable Table, we are featuring the Breadfruit and Rum Bar. It's a secret little hidden gem in downtown Phoenix, and the chef there is reinventing seafood gastronomy. So let's go check it out. And by the way, if you're wondering what my drink of choice is at Starbucks, I'm super basic. Judge me all you want. I always go with the pumpkin spice latte, but hey, I'm sustainable. I've got it in a reusable AJ's container. So props on that. All right, guys, let's go. We have arrived on this rainy day in Phoenix. We're located at 108 East Pierce Street. All right, guys, let's go and check it out. So back in 2008, Dwayne Allen and I noticed that there was um, a need for something a little bit more diverse in our downtown area. So we decided to open the breadfruits and we thought, what could possibly be better than to bring some Jamaica, you know, something a little bit culturally diverse down here. Come on in. So here is our rum bar. We have over 150 premium rums. This is where all the cocktail magic happens. This is um, Don Q and Nijo, and what I love about them is they're really known for their sustainability practices, and they're really pushing the front for sustainability in rum production in general. So obviously you're really well known for your jet fresh seafood, and you have some exquisite dishes on the menu. I mean, my gosh, I don't even know what to decide to order tonight. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about how your cuisine is unique? Absolutely. So. Um, like you said, Jet Fresh Seafood, so we specialize in bringing in the freshest U.S. wild-caught seafood and um, aquaculture, like sustainably raised seafood in the nation. So what you see, because the breadfruit is a Jamaican restaurant, it's an island nation, you're going to find a lot of fun seafood dishes on there. Yeah, I mean, when I walked through that front door, I felt like I was already on like a <laughs> beach vacation. It's like I'm no longer in the desert. It's yeah. so cool. We try to do it. I mean, that's the intention. I think when we all go out, we want an experience. And I think it's important that people have this like transportation in a way. Like you're not quite in Phoenix and you're feeling a little tropical and you can really delve into these menu items. Oh yeah, no, you have the Jamaican vibes going. I hear the music, yeah. it's kind of like reggae, yeah. it's chill, laid back. For sure. Oh yeah, no, I love it here. <laughs> the breadfruit in 2008 and the breadfruit in 2018 are two different businesses. Over the past decade, I have really grown as a chef, meaning fully understanding the responsibility I have and the power I have as a chef with my buying power. We moved from choices that weren't very good or okay to everything being the very best possible. responsibility as a chef to go through all these items that are available, a plethora of fin fish and shellfish every day to see what is sustainable. We had to really take off a good chunk of our menu and really reassess like, okay, so we can have salmon 365 days a year on the menu. That's true, but we want to use U.S. wild fish salmon. So our window is about two months for that. So we prefer to only have salmon on our menu like that. So just small tweaks like that. Um, and really letting the fishers dictate what's on the menu. This is a beautiful fish. <laughs> this is striped mullets. But this gorgeous unknown fish um, came from Tarpon Springs, Florida, and it was caught with cast nets. And it's a real um, earth-friendly way of catching a fish. It's important that um, we're buying a fish that is bountiful, that isn't being overfished, and that is being fished in a way that's very responsible because there's so many fish in the sea. <laughs> Make sure you're buying one and eating one that's not just delicious, but you know, there's enough of them. I never want to eat the last fish in the sea. Exactly. <laughs> Don't have to eat the last so fish in the sea. Exactly. I know. Have a mullet. We participate in two seafood sustainability programs. We are a part of the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch Program, 
And for them to endorse you, you have to have over 90% sustainable seafood. So we also back up our purchasing habits and our claims by participating in the James Beard Foundation's Smart Catch program. And these are just these are just ways for people to measure what we do. They're not even for us necessarily, but for you. So you know that when I tell you the striped mullet was cast net from Tarpon Springs, Florida, you can know what that means. And other people will back it up saying, yes, that was the best choice that that restaurant could have made. And then you know to support us. So you don't just take my word for it. You can look at Smart Catch designation or the Seafood Wash designations. Yeah, because I don't know if you can trust it. <laughs> Anybody that talks with their hands, you can't trust them. You can't, you can't. <laughs> it makes sense, right? So we talked about not having to eat the last fish in the sea, and if you're taking fish out, make sure you're you know not harming things around you. So, I mean, it's inevitable. People are going to eat meat, right? And if we're going to put something on our menu, like a beef brisket or a goat, a curried goat, I want to make sure that first we're supporting local, local ranchers, local agriculture. So these goats or cows are going to come close, close to home. And that enables us at the breadfruit to know the people that are raising the animals. And they're not raising a lot of them. So they take really good care of them. And so we'll, we'll follow the whole process the whole way through so we know exactly what happens. So um, for us, we have to know where our meat comes from. We have to know where our fish comes from. We have to know where our vegetables come from because these are things that everybody will eat. So we feel that if and when you're ready to eat something, make sure that you're doing it in the best way possible. You know, I have a pork leg smoking right now. Do you want to see it? I love that. Yeah. yeah. Let's check it out. Yeah, we have this beautiful smoke box I inherited from another chef that I've known and loved forever. Oh, and really? every week we get pork leg from the meat shop and um, we smoke it over pimento wood and it gets this beautiful red color and then what will happen next is we'll take it out of our smoke box in a little bit and we'll slow braise it for maybe like 12 hours or so until it's just fork tender. Those aromas are just heavenly. Gorgeous, and the color is gorgeous and you can smell the pimento wood coming off of it, so yeah. I was yeah. gonna say, I've never like smelled that aroma. It's gotta be the pimento. The whole it's restaurant will mesquite. smell like it. Yeah, it's definitely, it's much different than mesquite and it's a, it's a key aromatic in Jamaican yeah. cuisine. And how long is the meat in there? We're only going to smoke this for about four hours. Okay. And then we're going to braise it for maybe about 12-ish, depending on how it, it comes out. 12-ish hours? Yeah, so it's 16 hour turnaround. It's pretty quick. All right, so a lot of love <laughs> is put into this meat. Yeah, super quick. Yeah, 16 super hours, quick. No, like no big steak, deal. You do it on the fly. Yeah. For some time, I was a vegetarian. And then um, I decided to be a vegan. And I remember the day I, I told my mom we were, we were at Sunday dinner having pasta at her house, and she made me leave. <laughs> She's like... Yeah. She was so upset with me because like, she thought I was killing, daughter. she thought I was going to kill myself. I wouldn't be able to eat enough. You know, there's no brujol, there's no meatballs, there's like nothing left in my life. But what I was yes. doing is coming to this real severe understanding of our, our food system and where food comes from. I mean, when you, when you grow up and somebody hands you a cheeseburger, it's delicious. Like, sensors are going off, right? Never did I ever have to think about where the cheese or the bun or the beef comes from. It, it comes from the window it came out of. So the more and more you learn, the more you know, and then the better you can do with what you're eating. To celebrate local, to celebrate seasonal, you have to really be in tune with what's happening around you in your community. And it's really easy for us because we've known Maya Daly from Maya's Farm for a decade or the McClendons for a very long time. So know your farmer, know your farmer's market, and we really let what's happening at the farmer's market, what's happening out in our sea, really dictate the things that you'll find on our menu every day. Chef Danielle noted that the leftovers from their daily prep are turned into stocks, soups, sauces, bar ingredients, desserts, and everything else that can come out of the kitchen. This is, uh, when we're done with this, this will be our house-made uh, herbal liqueur. It's uh, a mix of, uh, of about uh, half a dozen different ingredients, uh, including thyme, rosemary, sage, and some mental berries. 
some orange peels, and then we've got uh, uh, some grapefruit tree leaves, the actual leaves off the grapefruit trees that you see off the here. So when he's talking about rinds and peels, if we juice, there's a rind. Um, if there's something extra from the kitchen, uh, we don't necessarily just want to put it in the compost. We'll find a way it is food to use it as food, and that can come via a cocktail that Dwayne makes. So I decided to see what all the hype was about for the cocktails at the Breadfruit and Rum Bar, and I'm going to be very basic and get a pina colada, their rendition of the pina colada. All right, the pina colada region. Here we go. Ultimately, I hope that the breadfruit isn't even remembered per se, or me. I wish that people who come in would take away this sentiment of like feeling a little bit more connected with where they are and what they're choosing to eat. And as they move through their day and their space and their time are just making decisions that are a little bit more mindful and maybe they don't know why, but they just want this local okra or this great, you know, cast net mullet for some reason and Which they don't so know good. why, but maybe it all started here.